2018 is now in full swing, and as always, Bungie are dropping new bits of information, details about the upcoming expansion. So in this video, I wanted to jump in, round up some stuff about random rolls, how some of that is going to work with the year one weapons. We've got a couple of light details about the mod system, collections, power level, and how that will work in the new Gambit game mode. We're going to talk about some interesting new characters. We've got interview segments with some pretty interesting information, so let's jump straight into it. First up guys, if you do enjoy this video, a like is super appreciated down below, it really helps me out on the channel. But jumping straight into the news, Lars Bakken spoke to Polygon about the Gambit game mode and the power level for that. He said that our goals are that with power against PvE combatants, Gambit will be an evergreen experience. So if you're power 450 or power 600, which is the maximum in Forsaken, so that's confirmation of that, the max power level is 600. He says we always want it to be a fun experience, you're never going to be over leveled to those combatants, but the one difference is that Guardian versus Guardian power is on. If you are invading or being invaded, that Guardian is going to be highly dangerous, especially if you're of a lower power level. So that's pretty interesting. It sounds like the PvE scaling actually means that you can essentially play this at any level, and the combatants will kind of scale to you, or at least from around about level 450, it will be playable at any time to earn new gear. The one difference will be that power will be on for the PvP side, and this is pretty interesting. They're also doing that with the Iron Banner and Trials of the Nine going forward. Forward. So some good confirmation about power level in the Gambit game mode. Next though, we actually got a pretty awesome interview from Tim Clark at PC Gamer, and he asked the devs about year one weapons in year two. Scott Taylor confirms random rolls are going to be focused on the year two weapons, but you can infuse year one weapons and bring them with you. So Better Devils is the example right here. All of those weapons are going to keep the same rolls, they won't be able to roll random perks or anything. Scott Taylor also confirmed that these weapons will continue to drop, but he wasn't sure if they will be able to take advantage of the the upgraded mod system that we get in September. So we do need a few more details about that, but for now, random rolls will only affect new stuff inside of year two. I don't necessarily have a problem with this, I just hope that there is a lot of new gear in this expansion, you know, if we've got plenty of different legendary weapons, different archetypes to kind of fill out each slot, and then of course random perks that we can get on all of those weapons, it will be pretty awesome, we just need a pool of stuff that is actually big enough to keep that interesting for a long period of time. On the subject of collections though, Scott Taylor said, you can pull out exotics at any time, you can pull out year one stuff, and then he goes to say, and for the Forsaken random rolls, we're going to dive into the details of that soon. The fact that he talks about random rolls in reference to the collection is pretty interesting, so maybe it would actually be possible to collect a particular roll, you know, so if you had a really great scout rifle of some sort, it could actually keep that particular roll in the collection, maybe that's a thing. Of course, we'll have to wait for confirmation, but he does say that shaders will be able to be pulled out of that collection as well. So obviously this is going to be linked to that that big fix for the shader problem in Destiny 2. But Tim Clark says, with this being a Western themed expansion, there were three popular exotic hand cannons that people wanted, and Scott Taylor said, right. Hawkmoon, Thorn, and Last Word. Chris Barrett said we're not announcing anything yet, but there is going to be a ton of awesome stuff in Forsaken. Scott Taylor said, I will say another thing though, if you look at the new Gambit trailer, you might see a little something. Now this comment is in direct reference to Hawkmoon, Thorn, and Last Word. Inside of the Gambit trailer, we have one confirmed exotic, and it's the hand cannon that looks a hell of a lot like the Thorn. They've also confirmed that this exotic hand cannon will be an exclusive for the Gambit mode. Presumably it won't just be a random drop, it's probably going to be a quest, you'll have to reach some level of progression in Gambit, but that is without a doubt, in my opinion, a tease to that hand cannon that we see. I don't personally believe that it's actually Thorn, I think it could be a weapon influenced by the Thorn, or made using the Thorn in some way or another, but definitely a huge tease there to this weapon being linked to the Thorn, which isn't necessarily super surprising, because visually it's almost identical in terms of the actual model, it just has new visual effects on it. But on the subject of Gambit, of course, where that will come from, just wanted to point something interesting out. Of course, we have the new NPC for that mode called the Drifter. When you're actually starting a game of Gambit, you're on board the Drifter's ship. So that's what you can see right here. And then he actually transmats you to the location where you're going to play the Gambit mode. But we can see the ship from the outside right here. So we've got this image. We can see four Guardian ships. So this could be a Crucible map. More likely, it would be a Gambit map. But the ship right there, which has this, I don't even know what it is, almost junk in terms that is actually the Drifter's ship. You can also see it in the loading screen for any of the Gambit maps. So as you fly down into the EDZ map, you can see a ship as well. So pretty interesting, I just thought it was worth pointing out. Next though, in the PC Gamer article, they talk about Cade. And Scott Taylor said it was really important that it was Cade, because Cade is at a really unique place in the universe. We wanted to tell
about a story with tremendous stakes that's deeply personal, and we were talking about how we could make both the players on the couch at home, as well as the Guardian in the game, feel something where it was very clear what your motivation was. And they've said as well that they essentially wanted to make us hate Prince Aldrin for what he's done. But further on that subject, Scott Taylor did confirm Cade is 100% dead. So for now, in the universe, Cade is absolutely gone. I kind of anticipated somehow maybe he would come back. But according to what we're seeing, that is not going to be the case. But Scott Taylor did say on the subject of the raid, I'll tell you that the raid is connected story-wise to all of what you'll see in Forsaken. It's not a side thing, it's the ultimate culmination of everything that you've learned, but that doesn't mean the obvious thing. So that is really interesting as well. Of course, we know that the raid will take place in the Dreaming City, which is the homeland of the Awoken. There are a couple of really interesting pieces of concept art, the first one would be this one, which is very curious indeed. We have this character right here, kind of hooded. They also have Awoken symbols on that cloak. If you look at their face, it actually looks a little bit like the Queen, but I'm not entirely sure that it is the Queen. I've seen a lot of speculation that it could be. But we do have a crow on their shoulder, which is very interesting because if you remember, Prince Aldrin was originally going to be named the Crow. And this is many years ago back in Destiny's development. It was also the Crows, which was kind of his faction. So it's really interesting that we see a white crow on the shoulder of this character. And once again, that sawn off shotgun that the character's holding is very interesting. This is just concept art. However, whenever Bungie ship concept art like this with an expansion press pack, ever since Destiny 2 came out, every character that they've shown in concept art has actually been a thing in the game. So who is this person? Well, I guess we're going to find out. Either way, it looks like we might be getting a pretty awesome sawn off exotic at some point later down the road in Forsaken. But from the looks of it, this is going to be stuff that Bungie want players to discover for themselves. Let me know any theories you have on that stuff. Like I said, though, it's pretty much 99% certain that whatever we're seeing here will be in the game. Something to point out when it comes to weapons, some of the perks, and random rolls. One of the weapons that will come from the Gambit mode is the Bygone's Pulse Rifle. This is actually a very good pulse rifle. It's 390 rounds per minute. But the important thing to notice about this is that it actually has two trait bonuses on it, kind of like we see with raid weapons. So it does have Rampage and it also has Outlaw. Bungie have confirmed that these weapons will be able to roll random perks. So the current roll that we've been using in the playtest is actually really stinking good. However, we will be getting random rolls on weapons that have two trait bonuses to chase after. So it is worth pointing that out because there was a lot of conversation, you know, there aren't enough perks in the game, there aren't enough slots on the weapons, but for at least some of them we will be seeing double trait bonuses. So I think the only other thing we really need on top of the mod system, of course, is a good few more perks for weapons. I'm really hopeful that we get some new perks when Forsaken actually drops. But that's going to summarize this roundup of new E3 information. Bungie have said that they're going to break down more details on new systems and things before E3 is over, so I'll keep you guys posted on any other new stuff that we learn, but just to point a couple of things out back in Destiny 2 right now, we finally have the Will of the Thousands Nightfall, this is of course the Zol Nightfall, and the Strike exclusive loot has been found for this, surprisingly enough, it's actually a Transmat effect called the Worm God Incarnation. Adds a vision of Zol to your Transmat effects, Zaldio actually posted a gif right here where we can see what this Transmat effect looks like. It's pretty interesting, I didn't really think we would get a Transmat effect from a Nightfall. I have spoken before about a couple of other exotics, the Iris Pulsator Shell, the Stark Baffler Ship, and of course we even have Black Spindle. All of these are kind of in the database and are going to drop at some point. Really, that could be any time between now and the summer event coming up for Destiny 2. But guys, for now, that is going to summarize the video. I hope you have enjoyed the information in this video. Let me know your thoughts on any of it down below in the comment section. If you have enjoyed it though, like I said, a like is really appreciated down below. It really helps me out on the channel. If you're new around here, be sure to hit subscribe as well to see a lot more Destiny 2 content. For now, though, I appreciate you watching as always, and I will catch you guys very soon. I don't think there's anything more that we could have done to get the blood boiling than to to off Cade. So that was that. It was a you know something we talked a lot about. It was a really serious call, but we think it's the right thing to make players really really care about their journey. Is he really dead? He looks dead. He looks does not dead. look good. Exactly. He's dead. Okay. He is dead. Yeah. He's dead. Wow. He is dead. All right, so that's a that's a big that's, uh, shocking moment in the Destiny lore. We wanted to recapture our uh, most engaged players' uh, imagination with this with the story, and then and then really get them back into a game where the where the depth we're bringing the depth back to to Destiny, and we wanted to to make sure that uh, they were they were along for the ride.